This video is gonna be a complete guide on how to build AI voice agents using Retail AI's conversational flows. Plus, this is gonna be a walkthrough of two brand new game-changing features they've just released, making these agents far more powerful. This is a visual canvas to drag and drop nodes to create more conditional voice agents compared to the traditional single prompt agent. A node-based setup like this gives us far greater control over the agent logic and can help give you more confidence in what the system might say next. One of the downsides of a conditional system previously was that moving between these nodes was very difficult and could result in just a really static and non-agentic agent. Although I'm gonna do a walkthrough of flex mode, which is a brand new feature by Retail that enables us to get the single prompt level of flexibility on this node-based canvas. So I'll do a complete dive into flex mode as well as a complete walkthrough on all of the other features. So let's dive into it. This right here is the Retail Conversational Flows system. This is once again, it's sort of a canvas. We've got nodes on this canvas and this is how we're gonna be structuring our voice agents. Now, if you're completely brand new to building voice agents, I would definitely recommend learning a bit about how these single prompt systems work first, as these are the more traditional ways to get a more basic voice agent set up, where we simply have one big set of instructions and this has access to tools and it calls those tools based on our instruction set. I've got plenty of other videos going through the single prompt setups of these agents, but this video is gonna have a core focus on the conversational flows here on Retail. And if you've already seen my previous video going through the conversational flows, this video is gonna be going through a lot of the brand new updates that have been made as well. So there's a lot of new features and this has changed quite a bit. And so I definitely recommend getting updated on all the new features. All right, so to get started with the basics, I'm just gonna go through the fundamental concepts to do with how to build and structure agents and voice agents on this canvas. So ultimately, when you go ahead and create a new conversational flow agent here on Retail, we're gonna land on this canvas so we can drag around. I've got some other modules down here. I'm gonna to get to those in a little bit to, to walk through some of the new features on this canvas. Uh, otherwise, what we're gonna see is this begin little node here. This is just where the conversation is going to get started with. So we can drag this into our first conversation step right here, which is gonna be used to initiate the conversation obviously with the user. So on the left-hand side, you'll see we've got a bunch of nodes and these nodes are what we can essentially put on the canvas. So we can click on function. We can then add a tool into our function. So check availability for a calendar maybe. I can add this and add this to the canvas. And now we can see we've got a specific function call that we can drag into. And you can see that it's very much like a workflow where we go from step one to step two to step three. So just to speed through the nodes here, the conversation step is what you'd think it is. It's pretty much exactly what we're gonna be saying to the user. So we've got two versions of this. We've got a prompt, which is us telling it to act a certain way so we can give it a role as you typically would with your prompt setups. And we can tell it that it's a, a receptionist system. It needs to greet the user at the start of the conversation. It needs to walk them through an appointment booking flow. It needs to answer certain questions about their services. That is the type of information that you would add into this prompt. Second to this, we've got a static sentence. So if we wanna have a specific message read out no matter what, every single time, we can just type this static message and it will read this out. So this can be great if you want a static greeting message, you wanna say, you know, hi, how can we help you today? This is what is gonna be read out every single time, no matter what, it's not a prompt, it's just gonna be read out word for word. And this is a key core component of the conversational flows here. Obviously one of the big reasons for using this in the first place is to get a greater level of control over what the agent is going to be saying next. So this will allow us to have some certainty that no matter what, at a certain part of the flow or after something specific happens, we can have a specific message read out no matter what. And so for some compliance reasons as well, this can be super helpful if at the start of the conversation, we wanna ensure that everybody knows that the call is being recorded. This is something that we can be confident in, uh, will be said every time. The function node, once again, is just for our tool calls. So once again, if you're familiar with single prompt agents, it's the exact same thing. If we click on add here, you'll see that we've got a custom function and we've got some of their already pre-made ones with the cal.com integration. This allows us to do webhook calls with the custom function. So we can trigger make.com workflows, NNN workflows. We can trigger API calls to CRM systems, literally whatever, obviously. And this is the way to do it. So you just create a tool, add it to the function, and then you can add it to the canvas. We've got the call transfer as well. So this is a dedicated node specifically for transferring the call. Very simple as to how this works. Obviously you click into here. If we click into here, we're gonna get a phone number pop up that we can transfer to with all of the basic retail settings. For doing a call transfer, obviously we make them as a cold transfer, warm transfer, different types of caller IDs we can have set as well. This we've got press a digit. So 
If we need to press any digits on your typical sort of numbering system, we've got the press digit node to help out with this. And we can also prompt this as well. So you can see in the instruction that it has by default, navigate to the human agent of a customer support department. So if we are gonna be calling up anybody and we are hitting that sort of IVR system, we're able to navigate that and prompt it to get to the particular department we're looking for. Then we've got a logic split node. This is sort of a more conditional way in which we're gonna be determining which pathway to go down. The way that we would typically structure an agent here on the conversational flows is that we would have our conversation step and based on what the user says, we're gonna be having some sort of logic to determine what they have said and which pathway we should be going down based on that. If I go back to the conversation step, you'll see transition at the bottom here. So this is also determining which way to go down. There's two different ways of doing this, either through a prompt or an equation. If we use a prompt, what we're essentially doing is just prompting in and setting the most common types of inquiries or the most likely types of inquiries that are gonna be, that are going to be likely to come through. And then our prompts will all get evaluated against the user's query. And it will just obviously just using AI determine which path is the best to go down. So for example, we could create some really broad transitions that say customer support or technical support or sales. These can be our very broad transitions to essentially categorize the type of inquiry. And then we can move it into a logic split node, which is a bit more detailed. So we can go, okay, well, if it's gonna be a customer support inquiry, is it gonna be related to this department or this department? And we can have this flow keep going. And we can use these logic split nodes to really break down that inquiry and determine who exactly should be getting this message. Then we've got an agent transfer. So if we wanna be moving between multiple different agents, this is exactly how we're going to be doing it. This is also something that is brand new and I didn't cover before in some of my previous videos. This is a brand new node that they've just added in. And this allows us to move between multiple different retail AI agents without having to actually transfer the call. So previously we had to actually transfer the call to another agent on another phone number, which obviously wasn't great for the most seamless conversation. But now, as you can see here, it says it will be a seamless transition with all the call context preserved. It will appear as a single call in history. So we're able to have a multi-agent AI system which doesn't transfer. And this allows us to get that far greater level of context. We can have multiple single prompt agents, multiple conversational flow agents. Uh, this is just really great if we have multiple departments or we just have a really complex agent. Next, we've got a node specifically for SMS. This is once again, a brand new node that they've added in here. This allows us to, as you can imagine, send an SMS to that number. And very similar to the conversation step, we can prompt that message or we can make it as a static sentence. After the SMS node, we've got extract variable. So if we wanna extract any specific values out of any step of our conversation, we can very simply use AI to extract it and put it into a variable. So if we needed to get the name or the phone number or the email address from the user, what we can do is set the variables here and you can look at the variable type. We've got text, number, Boolean, and enum. And we can very easily prompt it in the description for what we're looking for, give it a name, and we're able to get these values extracted exactly. And this can be helpful if we're looking to do things like send an SMS where we wanna have their email as a specific value and just gives us that level of control once again to be very conditional to make sure that no matter what, we're gonna be sending their email exactly as we captured it in the first step. We can obviously prompt it to do this, but once again, for specific use cases like healthcare or legal or finance, where that extra step of reliability is pretty important. After this, we've got MCP. So if we wanna connect this into any MCP server, we can do that here as well with a specific tool to do so. So you can put an MCP server into here. You can talk to obviously Zapier's MCP, any MCP you could imagine. Uh, they've just got a dedicated node for it. And then lastly, we've got an ending node. So this is, as you can imagine, it's for ending the call. So if at any condition, you just wanted to hang up the call, you wanted to end it, doesn't need to go any further, you can obviously just use that. So hopefully you've now got a good understanding of all the nodes that you're gonna have access to when building out an agent here on the conversational flows. I'm now gonna dive into this workflow right here so you can get a really good understanding as to how these nodes actually work and talk with each other. So you can get a good understanding as to what an agent built out on here would actually look like. So I've gone ahead and built out a really simple flow here, but this actually perfectly demonstrates some of the new features by retail with their flex mode. But very simply, what I have here are three conversational nodes, each with individual transitions to talk to each other. So with our start node, our welcome node, I've said, hello, this is the customer support department. How can we help you today? I've said it as a static sentence. So no matter what, when we start the conversation, this is what will be said right away. And connected to this, I've got two transition steps. So I've said, if they need iPhone support, it's gonna go down this path. And if they need MacBook support, it's going to go down this path. I'll give this a test so you can see exactly how it works, but it is pretty straight. So I'll say, hi, I'm looking for an iPhone support person. Send that through, should go down that particular pathway. 
and it has, and we can see here, it's hit our node here and it's followed through with our instruction set. And so at a very high level, this is exactly how the traditional conversational flows system works. It is one node after the next. We will start at this node. We will move to this node based on the transition that we have at this node for the next inquiry. We'll just continue to move on and on to the next nodes based on where we are in the conversation. So if I were to continue building out this system right here, we would obviously have it detect that they're looking for iPhone support. Once we've detected they're looking for iPhone support, maybe I would have a logic split node, which would have a series of conditions to do with different types of issues. If it doesn't turn on, if there's a battery issue, if there's a software issue, each of these can be a individual logic split. From this, we can then have our individual prompts and steps to dedicate and help out with those with those specific issues. And then we might have functions that run based on those specific issues to send an email or to create a ticket inquiry. And that is pretty much how the rigid mode here on conversational flows works. And if we have a look at the right-hand side of the agent settings, if we click into agent settings here, you're gonna see that we are on rigid mode, which means that the agent follows the defined flow closely with clear node and transition history tracked. So to really reiterate exactly how it works, we move from one step to the second step to the third step. So like it says itself, it is very rigid. It is pretty much one step at a time. Now there is a little bit of flexibility that we can add into this. If we click into some of our conversation nodes and I click into the MacBook agent, for example, we can turn this on as a global node. And if I turn it into a global node, it means that it can be accessed from any node at any point based on the prompt that we've given it. So if I prompt this right here to say that if anybody ever needs MacBook support for whatever reason, it has to jump back to this node. And so that's perfect, that's awesome, and that makes it far more flexible and much more like a single prompt system which can jump around. Although it still means that we need to set every single node with a global node and prompt it individually. But the really cool brand new feature from Retail is their flex mode, which you can see in this execution setting. The agent flows through the tasks with full flexibility using all nodes as hints and decides the next action. So to make this super clear, I'm just gonna run the test agent once again and ask it for iPhone support. I need iPhone support. If I send this message through, once again, it's gonna go down the exact pathway to help us out. I've prompted it here to specifically say, I said, please repeat iPhone are great. So it says here, iPhone are great. It's not gonna say that unless it has a prompt to specifically, to specifically mention that. So if I jump out of this once again and we go into flex mode, we're no longer gonna be moving from one step to the next. Essentially, it's using all of these nodes. It's kind of combining it. You can think of it as turning itself into a single prompt agent. It's gonna be using all of those function and tool calls as tool calls whenever they need to be used. And Retail's own prompting on the back end is essentially gonna do the work for us to construct this into something that is far more flexible like a single prompt agent. And so to prove that this actually works, if I went ahead and sent this a message and asked that I needed help with my iPhone, it is going to not move between the nodes, although we're gonna see that the message here and the prompt that I have here dedicated for iPhone support is still going to get read out. So if I type right here that I need iPhone support, send that through, what's gonna happen is, there we go, iPhones are great. So it obviously read the prompt that we have here, although it's now no longer moving through the nodes. And the thing is, if I went ahead and said, I need, I need MacBook support, what we're gonna see is that it now says MacBooks are great. And that's exactly what I prompted in this node. Although, as you could imagine, this wouldn't have worked on our traditional rigid step. So the rigid step would have just stopped working as it doesn't have anything after this step. It would have required us to have set the MacBook agent with a global node. It would have then had to have jumped to the MacBook agent, which then would have had to have continued on to other nodes. And it's just a little bit more complex to get that set up, whereas the flex agent allows us to have that far greater flexibility. So I do really want to put a point on how much better this is than the rigid mode. So essentially what we now have is this conditional agent, which we've been able to map out the individual areas of the support departments. We've been able to map it out on a nice visual canvas, although we've got the exact same flexibility as a single prompt system. And so one of the really big issues that we run into quite a bit when we're building out single prompt agents is that understanding the structure and the flow and how everything works together can get quite a bit confusing when you have a big chunk of text. And so now what we could do is just jump into the conversational flows, build it out as sort of your build it out as a typical workflow with each of the different areas that we wanna to talk to, and then just swap it over to flex mode. And then we have this single prompt agent that automatically builds itself. And we also don't have to worry about it not being connected to certain flows because it has context of everything every time. And the other big benefit is that if you do wanna build out a rigid mode system where it's very conditional and you wanna make sure that it says the specific things every single time, you can still do that. But if at any point you decide that you no longer want that and you want it to be a bit more flexible, you want it to be able to communicate between these nodes at any point, you can then simply just swap it over and then it's good to go. 
I hope that makes sense, but I did really want to get through this as I think it's going to be one of the biggest and most game changing features when it comes to building out these agents. The last feature that I want to cover the retail has also recently released is something called components. And you'll see components at the top left here. If I click into this, you're going to see we've got library components and agent components. And you can think of components as essentially a workflow or another agent that we're able to easily reference as a single step in our workflow at any point in the conversation. So coming down to the bottom left here, you'll see we've got a main flow and these are like tabs, you can think of it like a like Chrome tabs at the bottom here. If we click the plus button, we're gonna see component L1 pop up. So we can see this is a brand new canvas. This is a brand new workflow that has just popped up here. And we're able to reference this brand new canvas workflow from our main flow. So if you're familiar with voice flow, or if you've built with voice flow before, you'll probably be very familiar with how these components would work. It's essentially the exact same. And coming back to our main flow, you'll see that the component pops up on the side here in agent components. We can click into this and you're gonna see that we can now reference that specific component from this workflow. So if somebody wants iPhone support, we could then jump into this component. Maybe that's dedicated and built specifically to help with iPhone support. And then we could obviously build that all out in this particular component. And once this is done, you'll see that we don't have an end call, but we have an exit component. So we can run through this entire flow. We can do function calls and message the user and do everything we need to do. And at a certain condition, we can do, we can conditionally say exit this component. And then that will jump back into our main flow and then continue on. So this is mostly helpful for really just cleaning up the entire workflow here, rather than having to build everything out all at once on the one canvas. We can just reference this component run through whatever we need to and get the information out of it and then continue our flow and it just splits everything up to make it far more organized but we're obviously going to be speeding up our workflow as well if we are building a component that we want to reference and use multiple different times maybe it's used for calculating some values or it's used specifically to do a, a series of function calls for maybe booking an appointment we can reference this no matter what wherever in the conversation so i can just click on component l1 again and you can see that we can reference it again and i can obviously add add this three times. And so if we've got a big flow and there are multiple different ways in which somebody could end up having to book an appointment rather than having to sort of route everything all around each other and have to go back to these certain flows, we can just send it to the exact same component and then can jump back into our flow and continue on as normal. And the individual components can also be set to flex mode as well. So there we have it. You should now have a really good understanding as to how to build any agent on the conversational flow. So if you do need to build any sort of complex agents where you have multiple different flows and there's a vast amount of conditions to determine different pathways, this so far does seem like the best way to do it. And then you can just swap it over to flex mode. And then no matter what you've built out, it is going to automatically turn it into that single prompt level of flexibility. So now you'll have the agent nicely laid out on the canvas. You can understand exactly how all the logic works, although it operates exactly how a single prompt agent does. If you are a business owner and you want to get one of these AI voice agents built out for your business, whether that's an AI receptionist system, an AI speed to lead system, and many more use cases, feel free to reach out to me and my team using the link in the description.